Now it is an honor to introduce Sadhvi Shri Bhagwati Ji Saraswati. Sadhvi Ji was raised in an American family in California and graduated from Stanford University. She started living in Parmarth Niketan in 1996 to engage in spiritual practice and services. Sadhvi Ji served as a Secretary General of Global Interfaith WASH Alliance, a President of Divine Shakti Foundation, and a Director of the International Yoga Festival of Parmath at Parmath. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sadhvi Sri Bhagwati Saraswati Ji. It's such an honor to be here. Our Puja Acharya Sadhvi Chandana Ji, Puja Sadhvi Shilapi Ji, all of the revered, respected saints, sadhvis, munis, all of the leaders of the Jain tradition and of the Jaina organization, our beloved and respected Audrey Kitagawa, the chairwoman of the Parliament of Religions, may subko pranam kartihun, are, it's such a joy to be here with you today. And first of all, a congratulations. Log Sochreteki, July 4th, long weekend, holiday weekend. Mujhe yaadai pehle, kafi mene pehle, jab baat hori thi baadit mein, convention ke baadit mein. Ki log aayenge, nahi aayenge. It's the long weekend, it's the holiday time. But aap logo nahi. Such much the kaya, how to turn holidays into holy days. <laughs> Baki log, everybody else goes two, three, four days, five days out, koi beach mein, koi party mein, koi resort mein, kahi to chale jate. But at the end of it, all that happens is, they come back maybe with a little tan, maybe have enjoyed themselves a little bit, but they haven't been changed. Aap logo ne, jo hazaro log yaha aaye, pura desh se or many patta lagaya pura vishwa se aaye. All across the world, people have come to be here to actually get touched and transformed and connected, and that. That is what is needed so deeply today. When we speak about Jainism in the 21st century, Jainism for today, it's actually the same. Jainism for the 21st century is the same as Jainism for any century because the problems change, but the solution stays the same. Whether we're being distracted by our smartphones, by an email or social media or the TV, or we're being distracted simply by the workings of our own mind, that distraction is the same. Whether we're being violent to the people in the neighboring village or we're being violent to the people across the world, that violence is the same. So the problems shift, but the answers are the same. And I have so much faith in you that you have the people who have the culture, the Jain Dharm. It has the answers to everything that ails us. We are here celebrating the July 4th weekend. Why? It's Independence Day. We celebrate finally, finally freedom. Freedom from the British colonizers. So whether we celebrate it July 4th in America, or we celebrate it August 15th in India, either way, celebrating this independence from the colonizers is wonderful. But 
Are we actually free? Are we actually free? Okay, instead of being colonized by the Britishers, by somebody from another country, today we are still slaves of our minds, of our egos, of our desires, of our angers, of our competition, of our jealousy, of our expectations, of our sufferings. And so the teachings, the teachings that Bhagwan Mahavir gave, these are the answers to how to actually be free. Not just Desh is free, not just the country is free, but Dil is also free. Man is also free. Jeevan is also free. My heart, my mind, my life. How can those be free? And he gave us the answers. The teachings that Bhagwan Mahavir gave, the tenets, the tenets of the Jain tradition. Ahimsa, non-violence. Satya, truthfulness. Asteya, non-stealing. Brahmacharya, our integrity. Integrity in our relationships. And apigraha, non-hoarding. These are the answers, my sisters and brothers, to every single thing that ails us today. Wherever you look in the world, whether it's personal depression, personal addiction, drugs, alcohol, problems in the family, problems in the communities, problems between nations, climate change, that which is happening between us and Mother Earth. Billions and billions of dollars and hours are spent on these think tanks and summits coming together. How do we solve climate change? How do we solve terrorism? How do we solve war? How do we solve greed? How do we end extreme poverty? Bhagwan Mahavir gave us the answers without even knowing the problems. Without even knowing exactly today, here is exactly what our world will face. Maybe he knew. Maybe as he closed his eyes and went in, he knew. But the answers that he gave us are timeless. And they are just as applicable today. Sometimes I live in Rishikesh in India on Parmarth Nikitan Ashram, the ashram of Puja Swami Chidanand Saraswati Ji on the banks of Ganga. And so many times people come and they say, well, okay, so, so how, do we, how do we take these teachings and live them today? Whether we're talking Jain Dharm, Hindu Dharm, Sikh Dharm, whatever Dharm we're looking at. Where is this applicable today? And we always say, you know, the cause of your suffering, the cause of your greed, the cause of your stress, the cause of the violence or the object of the violence may be different. But the answers are the same. These teachings are the same. And literally today, if we take these five tenets, we would solve every problem that is faced in the world today. And this is why the teachings are so important. And this is why it's so important for all of us to come together, not just as people who subscribe to Jain Dharm, but as people who subscribe to humanity. Because Jain Dharm is not only the way for people who identify as Jains. It is the way for people who identify as humans. It is the way for people who identify as inhabitants of this sacred Mother Earth. But I want to propose something to you today. Bhagwan Mahavir emphasized ahimsa. He gave us the five tenets, but he emphasized ahimsa, nonviolence. And we take nonviolence and we look at it from how we interact with our own selves. Are we critical? Do we condemn ourselves? Do we berate ourselves? Do we judge ourselves? Do we tell ourselves, oh, you're stupid, oh, you're worthless, oh, you're ugly, oh, you're fat, oh, you're stupid, oh, you're this? Do we criticize others? 
Do we say, you are worthless, you are stupid, you are this, either to their faces or behind their backs? Do we gossip? Do we criticize others? We take that and we move it then from ourselves and our interpersonal relationships into our societies, into our nations, into the world. But my sisters and brothers today, we need Ahimsa 2.0. We need to move into a, a greater vision, a broader vision, meaning when Bhagwan Mahavir and all of the revered Jain leaders have emphasized, for example, vegetarianism, and we do it not just to be nonviolent to the animals, but to be nonviolent to the planet. Today, we need to take that teaching out of just our kitchens, out of just our stonics into the world because it's no longer a religious teaching. It's no longer an aspect of just Jain Dharm. It is an aspect of humanity. And it's an aspect that moves through all of these five tenets. So I won't go into all of the, the statistics for you, but we know, we know that animal agriculture, we know that the meat industry is the single greatest contributor to climate change, to what's happening with our world's water, to what's happening with hunger, to poverty in the world. It takes, for example, 16 pounds of grain to produce one pound of meat. What that means is every single time that we choose, and I know not us, this we in the room, but we, those who are not in this room, choose to eat meat. It is literally saying, I deserve the food of 15 other people. Let them starve. Tens of thousands of children are dying of starvation every day. Almost a billion people sleep hungry every night. And the meat industry is saying, oh, no problem, have a hamburger. Let 15 other people starve, you eat the beef. And water, the amount of water that goes into the production of a meal of beef is the amount of water that you use in bathing for six months. Bathe every day. Bathe not from a bucket, but from a shower head that's pouring down upon you. In six months, you will use about 2,500 gallons of water, about 10,000 liters of water. And that is about the amount of water that goes into the production of a meal of beef. And I share this with you today because, of course, I know we are all vegetarians here. But it is important for our younger generation, Sadvi Shalapiji spoke so beautifully about our youth, and about the way we have to interact with them. And what I've seen is when you actually can give them reasons that make sense, and maybe it doesn't make sense to them in the religious world that makes sense to us. Maybe it's not going to make sense to them because it comes from a scripture or because Bhagwan Mahavir said it necessarily. But maybe in order to make it make sense to them, we have to bring it into the world of science the world that they are used to moving through today. But what I've seen is every single child, every youth who comes to us who says, why do I need to be a vegetarian? I don't think the cow is holy. Okay, well, you don't need to think the cow is holy to be a vegetarian. You just need to think that people are holy. You just need to think that the earth is holy. You just need to think that the future is holy. And if we care about our sisters and brothers, if we care about the future of our planet, if we care about the rainforests, we make the choice for vegetarianism. But when I say Ahimsa 2.0, what I mean is beyond vegetarianism, veganism. Today in America, look, if you're in India, 
and you live in an ashram or you have a cow and the cows are treated beautifully and the babies live with the mothers and they grow and everybody lives like a happy family and they're fed as Sadhvi Shilapiji was saying, oh, fruits and dried fruits and vitamins and so many wonderful things that the inspector doesn't even believe it. Okay. When that cow gives you her milk happily, no problem. But that's not the reality that most of us live in. Most of us live in a reality where our milk comes from the supermarket. And that milk, my sisters and brothers, you are the ones who are reading, teaching, speaking, living the teachings of nonviolence, the teachings of truth, the teachings of non-stealing, the teachings of non-hoarding. And what is happening in our dairy industry today is violence. And so I urge you, I urge you to take the teaching of vegetarianism into a teaching of veganism, that we will not put our dollars, our pounds, our euros, our rupees into the pockets of people who are torturing and killing animals. And then we need to go organic and fair trade because violence, as I said, is of course not only violence to the cow, or to the chicken, or to the pig, or to the fish. It's violence to Mother Earth. It's violence to our sisters and brothers with whom we share this planet. And when children and women are working as slaves in sweatshops to produce items so that we can just keep getting more, 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 cheaper, 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 because I'm depressed, cello shopping, Pejal. I'm bored. Cello shopping, Pechele. We have some extra time before the program. Cello shopping, Pechele. Let's go shopping. What are you going to do today, Cello? Let's go shopping. As long as shopping is our therapy, as long as shopping is our entertainment activity, we're going to keep needing to buy things cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because, of course, our money is finite. And as long as my vision is more, 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 cheaper, 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 women and girls are going to keep having to toil in sweatshops across the world to give me more, 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 cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. What Bhagwan Mahavir taught us is simplicity. He taught us how, as my guru Puja Swamiji says, to fill our self rather than worrying about filling our shelves. How to find. How to find that fullness in the self. We have it. When we connect with the divine, when we move towards self-realization. Self-realization is not ecstasy and joy and peace through a great shopping trip. Ecstasy and joy and peace through a wonderful sale I found. But it's ecstasy and joy and peace through the truth of who I am, that infinite nature of the self. That's the consciousness, the love, the truth. When we say satya, truth, it's not just the truth that comes out of my mouth. It's the truth that I live. It's the truth of who I am. And if I believe I am my physical body, and therefore I am the expensiveness of the saris or the diamonds or the jewels or the shoes or the handbags that I'm wearing, well, not only am I perpetuating violence in the world, but I'm perpetuating untruth. And so as we move into this Ahimsa 2.0, we move from just vegetarianism into lives. And I'm not saying that everybody has to become a saint, a sadhvi, a muni. I'm not saying that. Enjoy the world. Enjoy all of the divine creation. 
but realize that we are not enjoying it alone. And that, when he emphasizes satsang, association, the association of truth, that's connection. That's association together. We are here as a global family. So if we take these teachings from Bhagwan Mahavir, not only does our life change, because then instead of finding joy and peace in something I buy outside, I actually am turned inward. It reminds me of my favorite story on this, of the, the woman who's out in the road at night, old woman, she's down on her hands and knees looking in the road. And this wise man comes by and he says, Mother, what are you searching for? She says, Oh, I've lost my key. He says, Okay. He also gets down on his hands and knees. He helps her look. And after some time, they don't find it. And he says, Mother, where did you lose your key? Oh, she says, I left it back in the house. He says, then why in the world are you searching for it in the road? And she says, because in my house it's dark. I don't have any light. And here is this very bright street light. So I thought, let me come outside and look for it in the light. He says, mother, go back inside. An army can't help you find it here because it's not here. And what Bhagwan Mahavir taught, what all of the Jain tradition emphasizes and teaches is that joy, that happiness, that peace, the key to our lives that we're looking for is not out there. It's in here. And when we go back inside, then we find it. And we become assets to the world, not just in our families, not just in our sthanics, not just in this community, but actually to the entire world. Quickly, with the six minutes I have left, I want to just speak for a moment about this, this theme that you have for the conference, because along with the five tenets that Bhagwan Mahavir gave, these tenets that you've given for the conference are really the way for us to live every minute and every moment. But I want to just talk about them very quickly. When we speak about seva, and there's such a beautiful exhibit in the mandir on this, when we speak about seva, it's not those of us who have giving to those who don't. It's not about doing good karma because then I'm going to get nice karmic fruit and so then I'll be, I'll be rich and I'll be healthy in my next life because I did something good. It's not about that. We serve the other in order to see the self in the other. If in your seva you are serving others, it's wonderful volunteerism, but it isn't actually seva. Seva is how can I see the self, the same consciousness in me, the same love, truth, divinity in me is in all. When I serve, I realize there is no place I end and you begin. If I trip and I fall, if I'm walking down the stairs here and I trip and I fall and I hurt my right leg, my left leg is going to pick up the extra weight. We call that limping. But nobody ever has to say, oh, great humanitarian, wonderful left leg. Would you mind picking up a little extra weight? The left leg does it automatically because it understands the right leg is self. And if I trip and hurt my right leg every week, the left leg is never going to say, oh, forget it, bold hogya. Well, the kam hogya, kardia mani pichli hafta. I'm not going to do it again. It's going to keep picking up that extra weight 
week after week after week. And if in addition to falling and hurting my leg, I then get a fever, or I cut my arm, or I have a headache, or I have a stomach ache, my immune system is never going to say, Cello Tika, we did the leg, we did the headache, we did the cut, but we're not doing the stomach ache enough. Let someone else take care of it. It's going to respond to everything that the body needs because it understands chahe leg ho, chahe seared ho, chahe peet ho, chahe peet ho. It is self. And that is how we serve. And when we speak about satsang, I'm not going to have time to do all five of them, but with just three minutes left, I'll go into two other quick ones. When we speak about, sat, when we speak about satsang, typically we talk about it as association with the holy ones, association with the saints, association with the gurus, in whose presence we not only hear the truth, but we feel the truth. And that's the highest, that's the ideal. As much as you can, as frequently as you can, come into that satsang. But it also means in my daily life, who are my friends circle? Who are the people I'm hanging out with? Who are the people I'm spending my evenings and my weekends with? And let me explain why that's important. If I wake up in the morning and I take my temperature, and my temperature says 102. I imagine we have a lot of doctors in the audience. 102 means I've got a fever. There's an infection in my body. And whether I decide to treat that homeopathically, Ayurvedically, allopathically, it doesn't matter. But I don't want to have an infection in my if I wake up with a fever that says 102, and I ask all my friends, Acha, what's your fever? What's your temperature? And they all say 102. Mujhe lagega ki, Acha, that's normal. I only know that 102 is sick because everyone else is 98.6. If everyone tells me that their temperature is 102, I'm not going to do any treatment. I'm not even going to realize there's a problem. And I mention this because today in this country specifically, or may you say I own. I grew up in Hollywood about, depending on the traffic, an hour to two hours from here. Is this Sanskriti say, is this culture say may I own? To mujhe malumi ki yaha kya bimari chal rahe man ki, dil ki. Jeevan ki, stress ki. And if everyone, if everyone we ask says, yes, I'm stressed, yes, I need shopping therapy, yes, I need hamburger therapy, yes, I need this therapy, alcohol therapy, yes, I hate my family, yes, I want this, that becomes the new normal. Though Hamada satsang joy, our Sangha, it's very important, not only in conventions and temples and stonics when we can be with the holy ones, but in every day. Be careful. Be careful of those with whom you are interacting so that you know what really is the normal I want to live with. When we take this, When we take this, we have Jainism, not just in the 21st century, but we have Jainism for the 21st century. And that is what we need. Jainism for the 21st century, for all of the problems that we face today. These teachings, these tenets, and first, here. We live them, we embody them with love, with pride, not with embarrassment. With pride, we give them to our children. And then we share that with the world. 
Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here together with you all today.